Hello Sashing friends, if you want to play a Druid on the new season, this guide will help you from the level 1 to the T4. I'll give you every step that you need to know and you'll see that without any equipment it will be quite easy to reach the last level of difficulty. I'll also give you the best spots to farm and if you like the content, don't forget to subscribe. Before starting this video, I wanted to tell you that it's in the worst case scenario in order for you to always be better than my character. Meaning that, even in my case, it's still easy to do the leveling. That's why I don't use any aspect, I still have some legendaries but the aspect doesn't work in my builds and I'll show you often my current gear in order for you to understand. I also wanted to give you some insight because with the patch 1.4 you have something new which could change a bit the way that we are leveling. You'll see that in the end it doesn't change much but I wanted to give you the info on it. In this guide I'll tell you that you need to go in T3 between level 40 and 45 and in T4 at around level 60. Because the idea is that you want to equip ancestral items at level 60 and sacred items at level 45. Now you'll be able to equip sacred items at level 35 and ancestral items at level 55. The thing is that the difficulty of the capstone dungeons has not been changed and if you're level 35 and that you go in the dungeon level 50, it will be hard to do it. So you should still stay at this level around 40, 45 for the T3 and around 60 for the T4. Of course, if you can do better, you can try it, but make sure to not lose too much time, for example, dying in the dungeon or not being able to kill the boss of it. I'll start with the idea behind this build and you want to play the poison creeper in order to melt all your enemies within seconds. You can quickly reach this skill because as you can see, I'm level 11 and I'll already have five points there and you also want one point here. It's very important to get this point because it will crazy boost the damage of your poison creeper. So make sure to take this one and not take this one. So at the beginning, as soon as you can, you want to get there and you also want to get 5 points in Tornado in order to have some damage to a single target. It's not mandatory to get this one, you can also get another one if you want, but this one is quite good for the single target, it will help you against the bosses. I'll of course give you the full skill tree in this video, but I wanted to show you at this level how you should be building it. So as you can see, even if I don't have any equipment yet, it's very efficient no matter the level that you'll be playing. And with that, you don't have to worry about the aspects, the legendaries and so on. You simply get the best stuff that you can drop and the leveling will almost be done by itself. So now that I'm around level 45, you want to do the capstone in order to go in tier 3. It's very important that you do so between the level 40 and 45 because you have sacred items which are available at level 45. So make sure to go at that time. For my gear, I don't have a very good one. I also didn't care at all about all the legendary power, so it's to show you that they don't work with my builds, but that's the idea that you don't have to bother with the aspects, even if it's much easier with the new codex. But the idea is that it will still be very easy. Before I show you the skill tree for the spirit boons, you can either do it at level 15, it will be longer but you'll start unlocking your boons and otherwise you can do it a bit later, it will be much more faster. For example, I did it at my level 44, it took me 2 minutes but I don't have the boons unlocked, so as you prefer you can do it whenever you want. I'll show you some gameplay in this capstone in order to unlock the T3. I took the worst case scenario because my stuff is very bad and I don't even have the buffies from the season. So for you it will be much easier but I wanted to show you in that case where you have the worst condition possible that it's not very hard to do. The first elites can be a bit tricky to kill so take your time, wait a bit if you want to have your poison creeper back and you'll see that in the end they'll die easily. Just don't be always in melee range against these elites because they'll do some good damage and you'll need plenty of potions. Otherwise the only thing that you need to really pay attention is your poison creeper. You absolutely want to not miss your spell on your enemies. Well the area is big enough but just make sure that when you press the button to have elites or bosses in the area of effect. Otherwise you shouldn't have any trouble to finish this dungeon. Once it's done you'll want to get in T3 in order to have sacred items and be around level 60 in order to unlock the tier 4. 
I just resetted my skill tree in order to show you the leveling path. So you want to put one point here and here for the attack speed in order to generate more spirit. Five points, no, not this one, but this one, five point, one point, one point here. And then you want to get one point, one point, and one point. You also want five points on the poison creeper, one point here, the duration, and three points just here. So that will be around level 15. Then you go here, you take unstoppable, you want also the spirit, or you can consider the attack speed if you prefer, and you want this one for the healing. You want to get a bit below this passive in order to have some damage reduction, and this one for the fortification. For the K passive, you can get this one, it will grant you a bit of life. 3 seconds after leaving the werebeer, you'll be in werebeer when you use this one. So it's not very important, but this one is uh, okay to take. You also take this one, this one, in order to have some crown control reduction when you are fortified. And you can get this passive just here, 1 point, 3 points, 3 points just here, and then 2 points just here. It will help you to have some critical chance with Tornado. Then you want to get 1 point here, 3 points here, and you'll put the 2 points just here in order to increase your non-physical resistances. You also want to finish the last points, 1 point here and 3 points here, in order to also have a bit of critical strike damage on your tornado. Before going into the dungeon, I wanted to show you my current gear, so at level 60. Don't forget that you can put some gems into the sockets, but otherwise, as you can see, nothing very fancy. Just the only thing, I got a bit lucky, well, on Tornado with one additional target, and on this one, the plus two, two poison creepers. So you can pay attention to these few things if you want, and if possible, try to get some cooldown or lucky hit in order to have a better leveling. I'll show you some gameplay on this capstone dungeon with my current gear and you'll see that except the anibus which can be a bit boring, it's quite easy to do. You'll also be quite tanky so even at level 60 it will be hard for the enemies to kill you and you won't be one shot by the enemies. Elias will also be quite easy and you'll be able to go in T4 at level 60. After that you can use the season events or the legion in order for you to easily get some ancestral items. To finish, once you have the right aspects, you can switch to your build. I'll finish this leveling part with a sum up, so for the level 1 to 45 you want to farm in T2 and then at level 45 you want to go in T3. Once you're fully equipped with sacred items and that you get to level 60, you want to do the same and go this time in T4. After that, get the full gear in Ancestral and you want to start having the right aspects for your build. Of course, you have plenty of builds for the Dreads and the other classes on SlashEclipse.com. Then you'll want to start doing some Nightmare Dungeons in order to have experience for your glyphs and you can also do some target farming if you're looking for a specific unique. Just a word on the Paragon setup, you can either go for the Paragon of your build so that you don't have to reset your Paragon, or you can also go for a Poison Damage one and reset it after. I'll now give you the best spots to farm in the 1.4 because you'll want to do some Hell Tides. They are available at the first level of worlds, meaning in T1 and T2, and they grant you a ton of experience. You can still consider the solo dungeon which is quite cool, and the other one, this time if you are in a party of 3 players. You have three ways and it will be very fast to get some experience. Also, don't forget to always kill the bosses when they're available. If you want, you can also think about the legions and for the nightmare dungeon, you should not do them before level 70. Finally, don't forget to check the seasonal events because sometimes they give some good experience, for example on the season 2 and a bit less on the season 3. I also wanted to give you some legendary powers that you should be using, even if as you saw it's not mandatory, but the idea is that you don't have to farm any dungeon, but if you drop them, that you'll be able to equip them. First you have some resource generation, you'll have more tornadoes, and more chance to reset your creeper, the inner column which is quite cool to boost your damage, the rotating cycle with the poison buff, anything boosting damage reduction or armor, the plus one to companion, and lastly a boost to your core skills. So once again it's not at all mandatory, but if you drop them, you might as well use it. Last word before I finish this video, don't forget that you'll always want to have an elixir and some incense. They are very easy to have on the 1.4 so make sure to not forget them. If there's one, you'll also want to have the seasonal buff, and if you play in party, you'll also have an experience bonus based on the number of players. Obviously, if you have all these buffies, it will be much faster to get experience. Thanks for watching this video, and don't forget that you have everything that you need on Diablo 4, guides, builds, and target farming on the link below the video.